Hi everyone, this is another segment of Monsignor's Musings. And today our Holy Father did something unusual. He gave uh, an Irby et Orby special address and blessing. That's usually done at Christmas and Easter and sometimes for a very special occasions. But I guess the coronavirus sweeping across the world is a special occasion. The phrase, the Latin phrase, Urbi et Orbi, is Latin for, as I've said, to the city and to the world. For those who might know some Latin, it's the dative form of the Latin word for city and world. And, oops, excuse me, our Holy Father, the city would refer to Rome because our Holy Father is the Bishop of Rome. Yes, he doesn't actually do the daily administration of the diocese, but he is the bishop of the Diocese of Rome. And his cathedral church, actually, is the John Lateran. And so, uh, like our cathedral parish, by the sacrament, Bishop Molesic, that's his cathedral church. For Papa Francesco, Pope Francis, his cathedral parish or church is John Lateran. But the one we know best is the Basilica of St. Peter. That's where usually the Urbi and Orbi address and blessing is given. And so I'm just going to, I encourage you really to look it up, just like Google uh, Pope Francis Special Blessing, March 23rd, and you can get the whole text. But I'm going to read a little bit of it, just some excerpts. I think it's, it's worthwhile because he's addressing the concerns we have, the fears we have, etc., of the unknown, and things of that nature. He's reading or uses the gospel of the calming of the storm. This is in Mark, Mark 4, verse 35 through... 41. So I'll read it. By the way, I should say, the Lord be with you. And may God bless and keep you. So let's begin. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. There we go. Let's get ourselves back on track. On that day, as evening drew near, he said to them, Jesus to the apostles, Let us cross to the other side. So leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. The other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were crashing over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why were you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with awe, great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now his text, his homily. Just, just some excerpts. When evening had come, that's from Mark 4.35, the first uh, phrase of our passage tonight. The gospel passage we have just heard begins like this. For evenings now, it has been evening. For weeks now, it has been evening. The thick darkness has covered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. It has taken over our lives, filling everything with a deafening silence and a distressing, distressing void. That stops everything as it passes by. We feel it in the air. We notice it in people's gestures. Their glances give them away. We find ourselves afraid and lost. Like the disciples in the gospel, we are caught off guard by an unexpected turbulent storm. We have realized that we are all in the same boat, all of us fragile and disoriented, but at the same time, important and needed. All of us called to row together, each of us in need of comforting the other. On this boat are all of us, just like those disciples who spoke anxiously with one voice, saying, we are perishing. We too have realized that we cannot go on thinking of ourselves, but only together can we do this. It is easy to recognize ourselves in this story. What is hard to understand is Jesus' attitude. While his disciples are quite naturally alarmed and desperate, he stands in the stern in the part of the boat that sinks first. Actually, he's not standing, he's sleeping. And what does he do? In spite of the tempest, he sleeps on soundly, trusting in the Father. This is the only time in the Gospels we see Jesus sleeping. And he's sleeping soundly, by the way, to make the point here. 
trusting in the Father. Sitting like a baby, I guess you could say in modern terms. This is the only time, oh, sorry, I did that. When he wakes up after calming the storm, the wind, and the waters, he turns to his disciples in a reproaching voice. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Another excerpt. I'll repeat. He says to the apostles, and he says to us in this situation we face with the coronavirus, and other challenges in our lives. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Lord, you are calling to us, calling us to faith. Which is not so much believing that you exist, but coming to trust you, coming to you and trusting in you. This Lent, your call reverberates urgently. Be converted. Return to me with all your heart. That's from Joel, the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 12. You are calling on us to seize this time of trial as a time of choosing. It's not the time of your judgment, but of our judgment. A time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It's time to get our, track, our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. It is time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. Again, I just repeat what Jesus asked the apostles, asks us. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> faith begins. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I thought I took care of that. There we go. Faith begins when we realize we are in need of salvation. We are not self-sufficient. By ourselves, we flounder. We need the Lord like ancient navigators needed the stars. Let's invite Jesus into the boat of our lives. Let us hand over our fears to him so that he can conquer them. I'm sorry about this guy. There's something I must do. There we go. Okay. It's place bets how long, how many times that'll happen. Like the disciples, we will experience that with him on board. Well, like the disciples, we will experience that with him on board, there will be no shipwreck. Because this is God's strength, turning to the good, everything that happens to us, even the bad things. He brings serenity into our storms because the God because with God, life never ends. Apologies for my bad reading. He brings serenity into our storms, of which we're facing many right now, because with God, life never dies. So, again, the phrase that the Pope keeps repeating from Jesus, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Dear brothers and sisters, the Pope says to us, from this place that tells of Peter's solid rock rock-solid faith. He's at St. Peter's, and tradition has it that the Basilica was built by Constantine back in the 4th century over the actual grave of Peter. And they've done excavations called the Scotti. That's where they call the area where underneath the Basilica, where they've actually, they're pretty much certain they found the actual remains of Peter. So, I would like this evening to entrust to, I'm having a hard time tonight, I would like this evening to trust all of you to the Lord through the intercession of Mary, health of the people, and star of the stormy sea. From this colonnade, he's referring to the colonnade, Bernini's colonnade. You've seen that picture of the Pope from the balcony looking out down the Via, Di Via Conciliazione, the main road from the Vatican Piazza di San Pietro, the large piazza in front of the St. Peter's, down towards the Tiber River. It's called Via Conciliazione. Anyway, the way of conciliation. And uh, so let's continue here. From this colonnade that embraces Rome, it looks just like a big arm reaching out to embrace the city, and the whole world, may God's blessing come down upon you as a consoling embrace. It's a beautiful image. Lord, may you bless the world, give health to our bodies, and comfort our hearts. <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> do, 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 do. This is not, I'm not being transfigured, my brothers and sisters. That's Jesus. I don't, get, I don't transfigure like Jesus, so don't get excited. Back to the seriousness of it here. Give health to our bodies and comfort our hearts. You ask us not to be afraid. Mm. Yet our faith is weak and we are fearful. But you, Lord, 
will not leave us at the mercy of the storm. To us again, do not be afraid. And together with Peter, cast all anxieties onto you, for you care about us. So I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what's going on. I guess I have to lean back or something. So if you don't mind that interruption, I'll be okay. Anyway, as I said, I'm not being transfigured. So I encourage you to go Google, as I said, Google the full text. It's quite, it's quite good. You can see that Holy Father is trying to comfort not just Catholics or Christians, but all peoples, all faiths, and realizing, calling us to understand this is a time of solidarity. And um, we've just experienced a um, stay-in-place order from in our county of Westmoreland. Maybe your county is also affected if you're listening from some distance, fearing this monsignor's musings from some distance. And um, that means it limits our, our travel uh, quite severely, except for essential things, and uh, which I'm glad to know that apparently the church is considered an essential, life-sustaining institution. So anyway... Um, and so it's, we are facing challenges of, of, people, of families being together on an, on, on an ongoing basis, whether or not you're not separated by school time or work time. Uh, so there can be some you know, can grinding together there of, um, of uh, feelings and you know, uh, little faults we have that become more glaringly uh, bothersome because we're always seeing and things like that. So it is a time not only to deal um, with our greater fears about what's happening and what will happen, how long will this go on, etc., who will be affected by the virus, can we be protected from it, but also um, these more little things we go through with the irritations of life. So, again, may the Lord touch us and bless us. I'm going to conclude just by reading Psalm 91, which is a psalm of protection. This will be, this will be today's uh, edition of Monsignor's Musings. Psalm 91, Security Under God's Protection is the title. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. God will rescue you from the fowler's snare, from the destroying plague, Listen, which will shelter you with pinions, spread wings that you may take refuge. God's faithfulness is protecting shield. Mm. You should not fear the terror of the night, though the arrow that flies by day, though the pestilence that roams in darkness, though the plague that ravages at noon, though a thousand fall at your side or ten thousand at your right side, not that we want that, near you it shall not come. You need simply watch. The punishment of the wicked you will see. Now, that doesn't mean God's condemning people. You have the Lord as your refuge. You have made the Most High your stronghold. No evil shall befall you. No affliction come near your tent. The God commands the angels to guard you in all your ways. With their hands they shall support you, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper, trample the lion and the dragon. Good poetry. Whoever clings to me, I will deliver. Whoever knows my name, I will set on high. All who call upon me, I will answer. I will be with them in distress. I will deliver them and give them honor. With length of days, I will satisfy them and show them my saving power. The Lord be with you. May God bless and keep you. Keep you safe, both in body and spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless. Till the next time.